All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the first ever episode of the Neutral Zone Rewind mini podcast, uh, where, where we will take a couple minutes to update you on the scores from last weekend and recap some of the key moments of the event. Uh, my name is Ryland Close. And I'm Mitchell Porter. We're both uh, from Kent State University. I'm the assistant captain and Ryland is our coach. So thank you for watching and let's get into the action. At the Ohio State Buckeye opener, it was a crazy Q1 with each game going to 3-2. to two. OSU played UC in an overtime game that some have labeled uh, heated, especially with how the game ended going into overtime. In other news, Northern Kentucky got their first ever win in program history over Cleveland State, and Akron got their first win of the season over the BGSU Falcons 3-2. to two. Moving on later in the day to Q2, it was a... Day for OSU as they kept on their winning streak, going 5-2 and two over Ohio in their victory. Kent played their first game and won their first game against Cleveland State this year. Uh, it was a 7 nothing victory for the Golden Flashes. The Bearcats, after losing their first game in overtime, come back and beat Akron 3-2 to two to finish out Q2. Heading into Q3, the Bearcats get another victory, this time over Ohio in overtime, showing that they can do it in the big moments as last year. They showed a, a few difficulties, especially in overtime games, but their win over Ohio is a good start to their season. The Falcons got their first win over the Vikings of Cleveland State 5-1, to and Kent kept on their rampage with a 7 nothing victory over Northern Kentucky. And to round out the day in Q4, OSU finished the day 3-0 at their uh, hosted tournament, beating Akron 4 nothing. Kent beat Ohio 5-1 in one of the biggest upsets we've seen in recent history. And to finish out the day, the BGSU Falcons won 4 nothing over Northern Kentucky. And this tournament is a great way to start the season, as I think going into this tournament, there was a lot of unknowns about the Ohio region. And I think this tournament shows how much parity there is and potentially will be for the rest of the season. Yeah, uh, I would say really good tournament. A lot of very close affairs. Um, we have some key names uh, from a couple different schools here. Uh, we'll start it off with NKU, uh, brand new program. You know, started off, uh, got their first program win uh, in their first ever game. Uh, that's a lot sooner than a lot of programs uh, new to the NCDA tend to get their first win. So congratulations to them. Uh, Jacob Fleck is an old OU alumni that uh, helped start the program over there. Um, he looked every bit like a, a veteran leader and presence that, you know, a young team like that would need. Uh, he looked very good on the court as well. And uh, for them, sophomore TJ Gilkey also uh, had a very good day. A lot of underrated talent on that team, I would say. Um, they definitely have potential to uh, to win some games this year. I would not expect this to be uh, their only win of the year. Uh, for OSU, um, obviously, you've got, you know, Nick Kemmer, big, huge name for them. But they also had a couple of rookies. Uh, really step up and have some great performances for them. Uh, Colson Bunch and Chance Priest are the two names that I've heard thrown around. Um, really big uh, to have more names step up from them in the uh, with the departure of Ginsburg. Um, always good to see, you know, that program keep rolling and keep things going. Um, and for our guys here at Kent, uh, we'll shout out Mike Bilkso. Uh, had a fantastic day just catching, crossing, doing it all. Looked fantastic. A uh, good chunk of the returners have been playing NDA over the offseason, and uh, it's it's definitely shown. And uh, we had a rookie, J.J. Oldenburg is his name, um, clutched a very key 3v1 point against OU when we were up 3-1 to one to prevent them from coming to within one point of us. Huge moment for us, definitely needed it, and uh, we're really excited to see how him and the rest of our rookie class develops. And lastly for UC, uh, we've got uh, some more rookies, Connor Ingles and Connor Butari, who also stepped up huge for the... Uh, for Cincinnati. Um, another big thing, you know, another program that had a lot of very key departures. So it's it's a huge thing for them to have some new names step up and, uh, you know, make some big moments in the absence of these guys. And it'll be interesting to see how all of these teams do for the rest of the year. And as we're getting close to the wrapping up of the first ever episode of the Neutral Zone Rewind, we'll go over the records from the tournament. OSU and Kent started the season perfect with their 3-0 and starts, respectively. Whereas they came into this tournament as unknowns, uh, more Kent than OSU, as OSU was the number one team in, in the way too early power rankings in Kent. Team unknown, 
really knew nobody knew what they were going to be, but it's a good showing so far this year. Two and one on the day, we had Cincinnati and Bowling Green. Both programs looking to take that next step, you know, UC trying to get into that top four and BG trying to get out of the mid-table pack. Both very capable teams of doing that this year. At one and two on the day, Akron and Northern Kentucky go one and two on the day. A disappointing day for Akron, who were in every single game, and I think the scores were a little lopsided or maybe not just shown what their true quality was on the day. For Northern Kentucky getting their first win in in program history in their first ever game. Once again, congratulations to the Norse. And rounding it out were the Bobcats and the Vikings of Ohio and Cleveland State, respectively, going 0-3 on the day. Very unlucky for both programs. Uh, CSU, once again, was in all of their games. Same with Ohio. And it just, sometimes that's what dodgeball is. You get one catch that doesn't go your way or you don't get that one throw and your day can go from top to bottom or vice versa. Yeah, I, I would definitely expect uh, a lot more from these programs in the future. Uh, obviously, OU missing Terrence Checkett, uh, you know, I think things will definitely look up for them once they've got, you know, more of their uh, their roster there. And same goes for CSU. They only had 10 for this previous tournament. Once they've got their full 18-man roster going, I, I fully expect them to, uh, to look a lot better. Uh, and yeah, so with that, thank you so much. Uh, that is the end of our first ever Neutral Zone Rewind. Uh, just taking a couple minutes to wrap everything up. Um, we will be back um, next time when we've got a couple more tournaments coming up. I believe October 8th are some of the next ones scheduled. We'll have a um, tournament at Cincinnati. Uh, be on the lookout for that. And a uh, new tournament down in south, down in the south, um, down in Georgia. So that should be a very fun one. Showcase a couple new teams, a couple young teams. Um, and yeah, no, we'll be, we'll be on the lookout for that. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching and uh, have a good one.